Do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're here to demonstrate chainsaw lumber making today, and I'm going to try to walk you through all of the sort of uh, basic steps of uh, turning a nice beautiful log into some usable lumber. So first thing, I've gotten it um, raised up here on the sawhorses. That gets it to a more comfortable working height. It also makes it a lot easier for one person to manage the log. It'll roll really easily on these sawhorses. Um, if you're just down on the ground, then you're fighting against every rock and root and hollow, and it's uh, a lot tougher to roll it alone. So a few moments getting it up is usually uh, worth the effort. Then, because it was sitting here in a bit of gravel, I just took a wire brush, tried to clean as much gravel as I could. Um, I'll probably end up having to resharpen the saw after I um, make the camp, so after I cut off um, all of the bark, then I'll probably have to resharpen anyways if I've gotten into a little bit of gravel, but um, try to get it as clean as possible. Some folks will uh, use a spud and clean the bark off that way. I find um, just too time consuming, unless the bark's loose already. So I'm going to start by figuring out how to center my, uh, my milled wood inside this log. Um, so I'll determine the difference in the taper between the butt and the tip. Everything gets kind of glued together, working with these pines. Don't take your favorite measuring tape. So I've got 21 and a quarter inches here. And 21 and a half inches at the butt. So um, incredibly, almost no taper on this log, a quarter inch of taper in this dimension anyways, the other dimension might uh, be a little bit different. Uh, but essentially no taper, which makes our job just a tiny bit easier here. When I'm milling logs, the first three cuts take up about 50% of the time. Um, once we've got the first three cuts done, we've got a square log, then the rest of the cuts, they go really quick and you just start uh, knocking out lots of boards, which is really nice. So the first thing we have to do is take this irregular surface of the, the rough log and we have to get a flat plane above it to, uh, to use as a nice flat reference to run the mill on. So measure down about an inch and a half. And I'll make a level line. Doesn't need to be level. We just need to ensure that these two plates, when I install them, are in the same plane. So level is our, our easiest point of reference. On the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, drop an inch and a half down um, and install my plate, making sure it's level. If there was a difference between my butt and my tip, this is the first time I've had essentially no difference. If there was a difference, then I would drop it farther at the butt to accommodate for that difference so that um, we're centering right in the log. Just produces a little bit more quality lumber, uh, a little greater quantity of quality lumber. Okay, so I'll drop my rails into position here. If my log isn't well braced, or if it's a smaller log, then adding this weight to one side um, could roll the log, so I always make sure to have it blocked up. And I'll just check that the um, the rails aren't sitting up on a high piece of bark anywhere. I've got good clearance here. So I'm ready to cut. I've got a big saw because 
rip cuts take more power than cross cuts um, and we're often pulling a big chain so I've set it down to uh, five and a half inches right now which I know with my setup with these rails and plates five and a half inches will just clear underneath those plates but it's good to double check just to make sure I haven't forgotten or made any mistakes so yeah I've got a little bit of clearance below the steel plate obviously I don't want to hit that but I'm going to cut from the other side Always leave the saw idling for a few moments after I finish the cut, give it a bit of time to cool down, and I always make sure to walk it away from this really fine sawdust that uh, that rip cutting produces, because that fine sawdust still clog up the air filter quite quickly. This slab isn't particularly heavy, uh, there's not a lot of wood left in it, so I probably won't do anything else with it. Um, if you've cut a really heavy slab, it's not uh, there's no waste, just flip it over and you can mill boards off of it as well. Um, but in this case, I don't think it's really worth it, so I'll just set it aside. We use slab for um, any sort of spaced siding, like uh, woodshed siding. It's great for that. That first cut I made will be the eventual top of our cant. So now I'm going to cut off the sides and this will determine the width of the boards I'm going to get. So I'm looking for boards that are about 14 and a half inches wide. That's kind of uh, about the max that our miter saw is going to comfortably cut. So beyond that just gets kind of a little bit more unwieldy. Again, I've got one more rough surface here. I need to set up those rails to make the cut. Um, difference is now that I also want this cut to be square to my first cut. So you can use the square against my first cut. Okay, and then we'll go to the other side.
So we've got two of our sides squared up here. Um, as I mentioned, getting these three sides squared really takes uh, almost half of the time in, in milling a log. Uh, that fourth side we're actually not going to square up at all. Um, we'll just leave it right to the end. We'll cut our boards off of that fourth side so it'll just be left as our last bit of waste at the end. Um, and that saves us some time. It also makes it a little bit easier to get the last wood out. Um, so we'll just leave that guy. Now I'm looking, like I mentioned, for about 14 and a half inch boards. And I want those boards to be centered in the, the nicest wood here so I can get uh, the greatest number of 14 and a half inch boards. Um, so I've drawn a line, you might not be able to see it, but we're, we're quite high of that line. Um, so I wouldn't want you know, my boards to be centered here because I'd, I'd have some weighing on some of them. So if I can center them down here, then that's going to be better. Um, so anything outside of that 14 and a half inches isn't waste. Um, we'll get boards out of that. We call those second cut or third cut boards um, and they're going to be live edged both sides. So you can either use them like that or I just uh, snap a chalk line, square them up with a circular saw. Um, and I usually do that after, just pile them all up on a sawhorse and then process them later. So I'll drop the saw to one inch and I'll produce a one inch board here to get down closer to uh, my line that I was intending to use. On this third cut, we could roll the log um, 180 degrees, we could set up our square and our rails and we could square it up that way. Um, but there's actually an easier way to do that, which I'll show once we get down a little bit closer. Um, but for now, just this, uh, the flat surface we have becomes the new reference line that we're running the mill on. Beautiful smooth one inch board, um, obviously it's still uh, live edge both sides so that one if I want to use it to square lumber need a bit more processing so we we'll just throw it up on a sawhorse, snap a chalk line and, and uh, follow that line and give me a fairly square piece, um, if I needed more square I could joint it. Now I'm, I'm very close to that centered line, so I'll do my, uh, my bottom cut now. So this is where we can save a lot of time versus uh, rolling the log again. I'm just going to bring the mill all the way up so that my saw, the mill's going to run up here on this flat surface and my saw will hang way down here to make my cut down there. So there's a limit to how high I could bring up my mill, obviously constrained by the uh, length of the posts here. Um, and that's about 14 and a half inches. So, if, uh, so that'll produce for me a 14 and a half inch wide cant, which I'll then roll and start cutting 14 and a half inch boards off of it. If I wanted a wider cant, 16, 17 inches, then I could roll the log twice and just set up and cut off the top there but um, takes a bit more time and really 14 and a half I find is uh, about as wide as we want to be dealing with on a regular basis. Um, so I've got that set up ready to go. I'll just point out before I make the cut that because I've got all this weight bearing down, um, I use the shims. Usually I just put the shims kind of in any old position just to hold the cut open. But in this case, all the weight is bearing right over top my sawhorses. So I'll need to make sure that's where I put the shims. If I put the shim 
way out here, it's still likely to close up the cut when I try to cut over the sawhorse here. So I'll just uh, take some care to put these shims in the right spot. So I've got a really big sl heavy slab here that's left over. Again, not waste. Just don't want to deal with it now because I want to focus on the log. But I can just start taking boards. I'll probably get a couple of boards there. They'll be live edge both sides and they'll go into the, the pile to be processed later with the circular saw.